say good morning. Amen. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. He is our God. And through him we do value. This is the day that the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I am glad in it. Amen. We trust that you have a good week this past week. And we look forward to a productive week beginning on today. Amen. We're glad to be in the house of God to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. We thank God for his birth. Amen. Because without his birth there is no burial and there is no resurrection and we have no redemption and no right to the tree of life. So we begin this morning. Amen. We pray and we pray for the number of the fellowship who have joined us uh, via conference call or video call and or Facebook to our friends, supporters and members who have joined us via Facebook. We thank God for your presence here this morning as well. If you have not liked our uh, Facebook page, please do so. Please follow us if you have not done so. And also, please share this to your news feed, if you will, so the gospel of Jesus Christ gets out on this morning because people need hope in this season. I call this a season of miracles because this is a good time for God to do something that we cannot explain and we cannot take credit for. Amen. So we begin with prayer on this morning, thanking God for his protection and keeping us. Amen. And we thank him for his help because we need his help in all of our lives. I encourage you to continue to pray. Pray for our nation, pray for our city, pray for our state. Amen. That God continues to help us and guide us and that he is aiding us in our fight against this pandemic. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And please, 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 please intercede. Amen. For our nation. Amen. Our nation stands in need of prayer. Amen. So we begin this morning. Amen. We pray and pray us for divine protection from August 18, 20 to 20. We will pray the war against infirmity on this morning. If you would like a copy of these prayers, uh, you can simply just leave us a direct message there. Just leave us a comment there. Or you can email us. Either way is fine. And we'll get you an electronic copy of these prayers. I encourage you to repeat these prayers after us this morning because there is power in prayer. The Bible says that men are always to pray and not to faint. And the word says, God says, his house shall be called in house of prayer. So we begin this morning with the war against infirmity and it says Holy Father we confess and repent of the sins that open the door for this pestilence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we plead for mercy and forgiveness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we repent from all our iniquities in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ O oh Lord let your mercy speak and have mercy upon us as a nation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, save our land from destruction and judgment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, let your healing power begin to operate upon our land. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind and cast out the evil presence that invited this pestilence out of our land. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Divine immunity by the blood of our Lord Jesus overshadow all our health workers, strengthen their hearts and minds, and supernaturally rest their bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Power of the Most High, overshadow those seeking for cure and prevention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, grant our leaders divine wisdom to manage this crisis in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every wicked spirit assigned to terminate our lives perish and melt away like wax in the fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thunder fire of God, scatter, destroy and break into pieces every dark gathering against our existence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the wall of the blood of our Lord Jesus is around us and our household. Any evil force that comes near us shall catch fire and burn to ashes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, let the power base of this pandemic in the heavens and in the waters be broken to pieces and destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh great wind from the wilderness arise, locate the base of this pandemic and blow it away in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ completely cover everyone in this country and protect them from death by this pandemic. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We dwell inside the envelope of divine fire 
we are untouchable by the power of infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O wind of God, arise and sweep away the scars from our land in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and the blood of our Lord Jesus, we raise an altar of victory, praise, and worship of Jehovah in this land in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command the air to vomit all the seeds and tokens of death it has harbored in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pass over blood of our Lord Jesus. Envelope our nation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pass over blood of our Lord Jesus. Envelope our land in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pass over blood of our Lord Jesus. Envelope me and my family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pull down every stronghold of this pandemic in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and the blood of our Lord Jesus, we stop the spread of this pandemic in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the thunder of your power, O Lord, sweep away the power of this pandemic in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You pandemic, you COVID-19. Hear the word of the Lord. Your time is up. Die now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every rage of you eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood, we stop you before you stop us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give God praise this morning for the privilege of prayer. And I want you to know why we keep praying against the pandemic. And you pray for it to die now, and it didn't die. <laughs> it's dying. Hallelujah. You have to know that when you pray, and you're fighting against what the devil's doing. When evil has manifested itself, please understand that it, it didn't just happen immediately. There's a cause and there's an effect behind it all. That when this pandemic came upon our land, it was not suddenly. It's recorded that. It was expected. Amen. It was expected as far back as 2014. But the leaders of our nation, when it did hit in 2019, didn't do what they should have done. So inasmuch as it took a while for it to get here, we keep praying it out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you fight. That's why you fight. It does not mean that, it's going, that you got the power to just cut something down. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, because we don't know about our participation and some of the evil in the land. Help me, Lord Jesus. Because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, what's happening in and around the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, church folk are doing something that's wicked. And you gotta know <laughs> that when you pray against evil, you don't know who all that's gonna touch. Hallelujah. Thank God that he hears and answers our prayer. Let's pray now for our correction in our finances. Because the pandemic has adversely affected a lot of people. Amen. That uh, the soup lines that my mother and father told me about from the Great Depression. I'm an old man's baby. My dad was born in 1908. And he was a grown man when, in, when the Depression hit in 1929. And the stories they tell me of how People would go to church on Sunday night, that the crowds came on Sunday night, that it was a sparse crowd on Sunday morning, but on Sunday night you could hardly find a seat. They came to church praying for a job on Monday. Not a job to work for, but a job for that day. Because everybody and doing a lot of people during the depression of 1929, they worked from day to day. Everybody did what you used to call a day's work. Help us, Lord Jesus. 
and the lines that I see on the highways, remember with people picking up food, it reminds me of the picture that was drawn for me when people were standing in line. They had no cars. They walked. And they were hungry. Yeah. Those people are hungry now. So we pray every we pray every week about finances because people need help. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Tree of life be resurrected in my life. Repeat it after me. Tree of life be resurrected in my life. Tree of life be resurrected in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, make the dry places fertile in my finances. Oh Lord, unlock all the padlocks on my treasure chest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, rebuke the devourer in our finances. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every diversion of my financial blessings away from me. Oh Lord, reverse the diversion and cause the finances to flow to me now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, make the crooked way straight in my finances. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every fight for my finances in the spirit realm. Be one in my favor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ground that was iron. And sky that was brass in my finances. Turn back to fertile soil. And abundant rain. In my finances. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let my seeds always find good soil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, defend my finances in Jesus Christ's name. Lord Jesus Christ, repair every busted gate in my finances. Every lock on my finances that does not have a key I knock you loose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every financial bullet be flipped on your head in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, tares among my harvest, burn yourself up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All treasure chests with my name on them, find me now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, show me as you show Jacob how to make strong what is weak in my finances. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, for every Goliath I've killed, cause me to be paid fairly. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Key of David. Come to me and unlock every door closed against me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God of more than enough. Bring my finances from the prison to the palace. Just as you did for Joseph. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, I honor you with my money. All of my days, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every Haman type spirit in my finances, hang yourself in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit of mammon, I am not your dwelling place, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, open your good treasures unto me now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May my treasure and my heart always remain with you, Lord, regardless of my financial status. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. We fight. Hallelujah. And I want to remind you that the faith fight is a good fight because it's a fight that we win. Hold on, old soldier. 
Hallelujah. We serve a God who does miracles. We serve a God who keeps us. We serve a God who will never leave us alone. And it's the word of God that you be encouraged today in this season of miracles. Hallelujah. Now, why do you call it a season of miracles? Because it is. <laughs> God can make a miracle in any season. Hallelujah. But the miracle of Jesus the Christ, hallelujah, is what we celebrate. Hallelujah. Sing it with me, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. celebrates Christ. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. And those folk who want to say it's a, just a lot of commercialism, it, Christmas is what you make it. Just like church is what you make it. Wow. You can turn church into a nightclub. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord Jesus. That doesn't mean you ought not go to church. <laughs> we celebrate Christmas because it celebrates the Christ. And that's what you ought to do. Amen. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas. You know, folks want to talk about happy holiday, whoopee on a holiday, wish them a Merry Christmas, especially if you're a Christian. And I encourage you to celebrate it. Folks want to talk about pagan symbols and all of that stuff. Yep, whatever. The Christmas tree is no pagan symbol. 
It is a symbol of everlasting life. The evergreen is a symbol of everlasting life. Just like folk pick the rainbow and make something else out of that. Amen. I'm not yielding to that foolishness. Rainbow sign in the sky said that he wouldn't destroy the world by water anymore. And that's the ark of peace and mercy that scans our world. It ain't got nothing to do with gayness and, uh, and, and ungodliness. Hallelujah. I still celebrate the rainbow because it means a, it's a good sign to Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. And those who serve the Lord. So don't allow the world, amen, to rob us of our holy symbols amen. and our worship and our celebration of the Christ. Hallelujah. It's my pleasure now to present to you, Pastor of the Church, Pastor R.I. Samson, Jr. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Appreciate you exhorting us. Amen. You got it up? No, sir. Don't worry about it, Pastor. Amen. We thank God. Amen. You reminded us to hold on to what's ours. Amen. Amen. That is not the posture of the Christian to give up what God has given us. Amen. So he has freely given unto us and we should freely give as well. Amen. So we thank God. Thank him for who he is and for his great work. Oh, hallelujah. Even on this thank day. You, Jesus. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. We praise him for his kindness and his generosity and his unmerited favor, his grace and his Forgiving us and is saving us from the pits of a burning hell. Oh God, thank you. Amen. Amen. Like I said, if you look, if you ever down, if you just remember to thank God that He saved you. Amen. That'll lift your spirits right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Actually, you turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number one, and we will begin there with the 18th verse. Matthew, chapter one. Verses 18 through 25 will serve as our foundation test. Go ahead and look at somebody and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. Now look at yourself or take your cell phone or take your device and turn your camera to yourself like you're about to take a selfie and say, selfie, it's going to be all right. Amen. So with God, you be encouraged. Amen on this morning. Greatly encouraged by all of your presence here. And trust and pray that you have a good week. On this week in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And I'll pray. Good Heavenly Father, God in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. God, I thank you for this opportunity to share with these, your people. And God, I ask you to take me out of myself and to be less of me and more of you, less of me and more of you, less of me and more of you, less of me, to us all of you and none of me. Not unto my name, but unto your name, O oh God, be all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty, all the dominion, and all the power. God, I thank you this morning for helping us on this morning. God, I thank you for boldness and accurate articulation of speech. I thank you for perfect utterance. No sinners on my own as you, in other words, the Spirit of God will dictate. God, help us on this morning because we need your help. Speed us up because we need your pace, O oh, Heavenly Father. God, grant us grace because we stand in need of grace. Take our anxiety and replace it with your peace. Take our depression and replace it with your joy. Give us a new plan, a new outlook. A new vantage point allow us to see our circumstances, our conditions, and our circumstances being victorious through the blood of your Son, Jesus, the Lord is Christ. God, we thank you, God, for answering our questions on this morning. Tear us down, we need to be torn down, and build us up, we need to be built up. Restore to us the joy of our salvation. And God, we thank you for every person who gets saved, set free, spirit, for healed, delivered. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I agree with that prayer and say amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and it reads, reading to you from the King James Version of the Bible. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, so the birth of Jesus Christ went like this. All right. When as his mother Mary was espoused or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man or a righteous man and not willing to make a public example of her, was minded to put her away privately. And while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not to take unto you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, 
and shall bring forth the son, or bring forth the son, and will call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as an angel of the Lord had bidden him or told him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This morning I want to talk about Emmanuel. Amen. Emmanuel. Amen. That word, that name Emmanuel is interpreted God with us. And that's my objective this morning is to tell you that God is with us. Even in spite of all the crazy, uh, in spite of all that you hear in the news, what you don't hear, your personal anxiety, your per personal depression, whatever you may be going through this morning, God is still with us. And I want to say this morning that he's still sending his son Jesus to Christ into the hearts of men and to those who will receive him. Hallelujah. And it is important that when he comes to your life or when he comes into your life or he seeks admission into your heart to let him in. Amen. Amen. Many people want to reject uh, the Bible these days and reject uh, God's word. And, it, and it, it's the funniest thing to me. Pastor, because there is so much that is within our society that has its roots in the Word of God. Oh, God. I mean, you cannot get uh, the laws of the land that we have there based upon the commandments that God gave nation Israel. All right. So whether you like it or not, God is among us. Whether you acknowledge it or not, God is <laughs> with us. And whether you accept it or not, God is with us. And that's another killer thing about it. If you go to hell, is that you go to hell forgiven. Amen. I say again, you go to hell forgiven. You have to make a decision to accept Jesus the Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Because Jesus the Christ, he is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on anyone. He's not going to make you take him. He's not going to make you go out with him. He's not going to come to your house and kick down your door and drag you out of your bedroom and make you cut on the TV or make you cut on your cell phone or your device and watch church virtually online. He's not going to do those things. He All said, right. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. In other words, I'm waiting on you to open up the door to let me in. Yeah. Even in this situation here, when Joseph gets word that his fiance Mary oh, Lord. is pregnant, yeah. God does not make Joseph take Mary to be his wife. Now, to be sure, he gives him a word. He tells him, he says, look now, she's pregnant, but she's pregnant by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> all right. Now, see, all that went right by. That, that's, that's a lot to process. That's a lot to, to deal with. That's a yeah, lot yeah, to unpack, as many people like to say. Yeah, but yeah. He, he, he's having these thoughts, and, and look like he's laying there in his bed, I guess. He drifts off, and he falls asleep, and the angel of the Lord comes up to him and tells him and explains to him, what is happening. Thank God that he still speaks to our hearts and minds when we experience trouble. He still yeah. speaks to our hearts and minds. Even in the midst of confusion, we can still have peace. Yes, sir. Not only in the world trying to give you a peace, but the world's peace is, 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 is time-based. It only lasts so long. You get drunk, and you're going to be hung over the next day. You got to get drunk all over again to all get right back now. to that place. You can get high, but you, it's only going to last so long, and then you got to get high over again. You can yeah, buy you something, yeah, but it's only yeah. going to make you feel good for so long that you have to buy something else again. That's why the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Yes, sir. In other words, if you learn how to be happy with what you have, that's why Paul said it like this. He said, I have learned whatever state I am there with to be content. In other words, I didn't come here content. We have to learn how to be content. Mom used to always stress to me she always used to say, Reuben, she said, he that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful in that which is much. And our contentment is tied to our faithfulness as well. Yeah. All right. But we learn to be faithful and content with where the Lord has us right now. Yes, sir. We'll be okay. It's not that you don't ever expect better. You don't expect things to change. You don't expect things to prove. But you know and you understand that with God, better is still possible. Thank you, Lord. You have to understand that regardless of what's moving and not moving in the trouble and hell and the high water in my life, God will be with me. Say, when you go through the waters, so in other words, you're going to meet some water situations in your life. Thank you, Lord God. That, right. and that when you go through the smoke, the, the fire, he say, you won't kindle on you. You won't smell like smoke. In other words, you're going to meet with some hot situations in your life. Yes, sir. Some warranted, some unwarranted, some needed, some unneeded, some, some guaranteed, some unguaranteed, some 
necessary and some unnecessary, and some crazy and some not crazy, but you're going to meet with some resistance, but you have to still be faithful yes, unto God because the Bible said when we're faithful, when we leave it, and God will give us a crown of life. Hallelujah. But our God is with us, and he's loved, he so loved us that he sent John, Jesus the Christ, his son. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, they will not perish, but they will have everlasting life. In other words, when we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we're automatically preserved right then. Glory to God. Yes, we are preserved from hell. We are preserved from trouble and trial and situation taking us out of here and us just going to hell. We are preserved until that great day of our Lord's yes, sir. return. You all always be glad that God is with you. But the funny thing about when God is with you, it doesn't always feel like he's there. Yeah. All right. Because that's not necessarily God's son. He does not always make his presence felt. But that does not mean that he is there. But we walk with him by faith. And faith is not based upon Thank what we can Lord. see. Faith is based on what we believe. Yes, sir. So we have to choose and decide and make the willful decision to believe that God is with us even when it ain't right. All right now. Even when it don't feel good. Even when it's dark. Even when it's light. Whatever the condition is, believe and hold on to God being there with you. Yes, sir. Because he really will lift you up with his everlasting arm. What does that mean? He has everlasting arm. That means his arm don't get tired. <laughs> All right. That's, that's a good word All right there. Right. That, that, right. that. It does not matter how long God has to hold me. As long as he has to hold me, his arms will not give out uh, from abundance, which means he will hold you up. Yes, sir. His own dear self. He does not call upon other people to hold you up. He does not no. call upon intercessors to hold you up. He himself will save you with the saving strength of his right hand. Preach. That means that's God's dominant hand. That right hand, that's that place of favor. That's that, that place of this is my child. This is my person. This is my favorite. And the Bible tells us that God is no respecter of person. That's what Peter said. He said, I have perceived. Yeah. He didn't necessarily say that God told me, say, I have perceived. In other words, I've been watching things. You've yeah, been watching yeah. some things in life, and, and yes, you sir. gather and glean from observation how God operates, say, I have perceived. Yeah. That God is no respecter of a person, which means God will use you, and he will even use your trouble to help you. Yes, he will. But trouble, thing, funny thing about trouble, that trouble will always feel. See, you, we, we don't like talk about it like this, but jo Joseph in his text, he has some trouble right here. Yeah. Because... The funny thing is that God needed Joseph, and Joseph needed God. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's rough right there. That, that you All would right. think that, that God don't need nobody. Yes, he, you know, I mean, he, he could have found somebody else. That's very well true. Oh, yeah. But God had already said that through the lineage of David, he was going to bring his son, Jesus the Christ, into the earth. Yes, sir. So Jesus the Christ, his son, was sent by God to experience what we go through. Yeah. Say it again. He was sent to the earth to experience what we go through. Yes, sir. Hebrews four fifteen says, "But we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, tempted, excuse me, like as we are, yet without sin." Yes, sir. In other words, he's gone through the thing that you and I have gone through already. That's why he is a faithful and sympathetic high priest. Why? Because he knows what it's like. Yes, sir. He's walked the streets of this earth. He knows what it's like to be tempted in the earth, to have problems in the earth, to be depressed in the earth, to not be received in the earth, to not be loved in the earth. The Bible says he went to his own. Yes, sir. And his own received him not. That boy, that, that, that's got to be rough. That's cold. I mean, yo, I tell you, I talk about it from time to time, that his own brothers and sisters didn't believe who he was. His own hometown people didn't believe who he was until he left. He, he he leaves and then his brother comes into the fold and starts preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But while he was here on the earth, you know, all everybody said, ain't that marriage boy? <laughs> ain't that the carpenter? Ain't that Joseph's son? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ain't that the one that his, you know, he ain't really for his daddy? Yeah. Trying to paint a picture for you this morning. But yet still, in spite of the rumors that may have went around, in spite of the limitations that people may have thought and are placed on him where he was from, he was still used by God. Isaiah 53 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Oh, God. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Lord Jesus. That means that people ain't like him. Oh, 
a lot of people had problems with him. I mean, you come yeah. on, if you, if you if you look and study scripture, Mama talked about this when she was alive. It's like she said, you know, a lot of people just follow Jesus the Christ for the fishes and the loaves. <laughs> and it's a lot of people even today they still just fool with God for the fishes and the loaves. Yeah. Not for the miracles, not for the healing, not for the blessing, not for the revelation, not for the wisdom, not for the knowledge, not for the understanding, but for the fishes. Yeah. And the loaves, which is something you can easily get for yourself. We understand by his hand we are fed, but yet still that's all that they were there. Boy, why say he was despised and rejected of men? He said, a man of sorrows. What does that mean, Pastor? That means he was depressed. Yeah. You have, you have to talk about that. See, you have to understand. You, 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 God is all man and he's all God at the same time, but on the earth, he experienced a lot of what the earth gives and deals to us. Yes. He said, man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He knew what it like to grieve. He knew what it like to miss somebody, to love someone, and they don't love you back. He said, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. When he, when he, he's in the last days of his ministry, and he's crying over Jerusalem. Yeah. Not over nation Israel, over Jerusalem. Yeah. He's saying, he saying the peace that you need and you want is forever hid from your eyes. Well, how can something forever be hid from your eyes? Do you, do you understand how long forever is? That includes eternity as well. Yeah. In other words, y'all not going to be able to see what was promised to you. Oh, yeah, mercy. He's saying we hear that as a word of faith from him. In other words, we, we didn't even look at him. Oh, Jesus. We didn't even pay him no mind. We didn't, we didn't want to look at him. We didn't want to feel him saying we esteemed him not. In other words, we didn't treat him the way that we should have treated him. Yeah. But all of this points to God being with us in spite of Jesus Christ going through these things and experiencing these things, he's still with us. He, Thank you, Lord. He'll never leave us nor forsake us so that we can boldly say the Lord is our helper. I will not Lord, fear what a man or a woman can do unto me. The Lord is our helper. He is our paraclete, which means he's our helper. Yes, sir. That means you, you, you always have some assistance, child of God. Help me, Holy Ghost, while I talk. You always have some help. Man won't help you sometimes. <laughs> but I know somebody. Hallelujah. He will come and visit you, his own dear self, yes, and help you out. He will move heaven and earth if he has The Bible says yes, that God said, I can swear by no other, so he swore by himself. Yeah. By himself. That means I'm going to put this on me. I, I say that's, that's on me. You know, like you hear the, the cheering these days, they say, I put that on everything I love. He said, I'm going to put this on myself. Yeah. yeah. That, I, that I'm going to do this. And, and we see through scripture where God kept his word. Because of what he had promised Abraham. And he's still keeping his promise to Abraham. Lo, these many generations and thousands of years later. Yet still we are here because of what God told one man. Yes, sir. And can I tell you this morning, it's still good for Christians. It's still good for believers to hold on to the promises of God. Oh, yeah. But we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, we are. Thank God we're in the middle of it. <laughs> Amen. And then we didn't get taken out by it. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yes, yeah, inconvenient. And it, it, it gets on your nerves. And it has its own nuances that it created and all these different ripple effects that have occurred because of it. But guess what? You're still here. Yes, You're still in your right mind. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. You haven't missed no meals. Oh, God. I mean, we're blessed. Yes. I mean, it's not as bad as it could have been or could be yes. or even should be. Why? Because God is, is with us. Yes, he is. He said, you need to be reminded that even in the season of miracles, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that God is with us. Yes, he is. Let your heart be uplifted and be encouraged. Like Pastor has taught us down through the years, it's kind of get hard to get, you know, shepherds in the field at night in December because <laughs> it will be freezing cold. Yeah. But any time is a good time to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. We celebrate Christmas because it celebrates his birth. Without his birth, there is no cross. Without his birth, there is no resurrection. Without his birth, there is no stripes we are healed by. You, yes, he had to be born first for all these other things to happen that we benefit from. All right. So God sends his son Jesus to Christ to be a son to Joseph and Mary. Yes. Say it again. He sends his son to be a son to Jesus, to Joseph and to Mary. Yeah. And why is that important? Because God allows his son to be handled by somebody else. All right. <laughs> he, 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 he trusts Joseph 
and married with his baby. Yeah. Some of y'all parents out there, y'all know that means a lot. Yes, it does. I mean, and this is God the Father. This ain't no regular old baby, not taking nothing away from anybody's child, but we know everybody's baby is special to them. But this is <laughs> this God's baby. This is this this will get you on a whole nother realm of trouble. But it speaks to who Joseph and Mary were as people. Right. Why? Because there had to be something special for God to say, okay. I'm going to let y'all raise my child who's going to be the savior of the world. Yes, sir. Because you can't raise a savior of the world the way you raise a child to be a hulu or oh, a thief. Oh, God. Amen. And I want to encourage parents, continue to take time with your children. Y'all know they got the virtual learning and stuff like that, but you still need to help them with homework. Amen. Make sure they're reading because they're going to have gaps and stuff, I'll just tell you. So make sure they keep reading. You may not understand the new math or whatever. Ask the teacher, can you explain this to me in a one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah. That don't take nothing away from you. It does not mean that you, you're not intelligent because it's totally different from the way that most of us learn. Amen. I find other students the other week, I say, oh, oh, that's what they be doing. Okay, <laughs> so there it is. Hey, Amen, there's nothing wrong with that, but you, you have to train your children. Yeah. And you got to at least put good things in them. Yes. Even if you full of hell yourself. Oh, oh my God. Try to still put some good, at least so they have somewhere to maybe glean the goodness from. Yes, sir. So, Pastor, what you're saying, that, that, that God needed Joseph and Mary. He talked to Mary about Jesus, but he directly through the angel. But Joseph is talked to in a dream. Yeah. So what does that mean, Pastor? God does not deal with all of us the same way. Right. Amen. Some Amen. people he talks to, you know, just like you having coffee. Amen. With them. Some people he had to talk to you when you sleep. Yeah. Some people he gives signs and wonders. Yeah. You want God to give you a sign, and, and you know the sign that He may give you may be something that you don't like. Yeah. So be glad that you have a relationship with Him where He will take time and talk to you. Yes, sir. Well, why is that important? I mean, well, you have to understand, you got to remember before Jesus was born, God wasn't saying nothing for a long time. All right. I mean, a couple hundred years or so, three, four, I forget, I forget. Four hundred, I four hundred thank you, Pastor. Four hundred years, I mean, God ain't just. Lord Jesus. <laughs> I mean, he ain't saying nothing. If he wasn't already said, he wasn't saying, according to Scripture. That's cool. And then all of a sudden, here it comes, and the birth of Jesus Christ was on this order. And Abraham began Judah, and Judah began Perez, and Perez got there. All these started running all this down. Beep, yeah. the beep, the beep, the beep, the beep. Here it comes, Joseph and Mary. One came from one side of David's line, the other one came from the other side of David's line. Yeah. He's born to a royal bloodline, but his dad was a carpenter. <laughs> born to a royal bloodline, but he was raised to be a carpenter. So that lets us know that Emmanuel, our God, is with us even when our pedigree or who we come from takes a turn. Lord Jesus. In other words, Jesus Christ, all things being equal, if things had been went perfectly according to plan, he should have been born in the palace. Yeah. But some people in between David and him somewhere in there made some different decisions. Right. But in the defense of the Jewish people, they made sure that they cataloged and always wrote down who the descendants of King David were. Right. Because all this time they were looking and anticipating the Messiah. Yes, sir. Which means the anointed one and the anointing. Yes, sir. So I came to tell you this morning, child of God, that regardless of what's in your bloodline. All right. Regardless of what you were born into and regardless of what you inherited or you didn't inherit it or you grew up with or you did not grow up with, God is still with you. Yes, sir. But Pastor, it just don't feel like he's with me sometimes. That's okay. It doesn't matter what it feels like. All right. It does not matter what it seems like. If he says, I will never leave you, I mean, what's on the other side of never? All right. If he says, I'm always there for you and I will come see you and I will come and visit you, my people. Isaiah 53 2 says, For he shall grow up before us as a tender plant. Yes, sir. And as a root out of dry ground. Which means he going to come up from some place you ain't expect. Like when you know they talk about that concrete roll, you know, that roll that grew up out of the concrete. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know that flower you see in that strange place that shouldn't be able to get there, but yet still is there? Yeah. He had no form, no colorless. He wasn't the best looking. He wasn't the strongest looking. He's saying, and we shall see him, and there's no beauty that we should desire him. In other words, he wasn't popular and he wasn't handsome. But yet still he was used by God. And it does not matter to God whether you're handsome or beauty. That's beautiful. That's not what God looks at you. The Bible says, they, you know, King Samuel, as anointed as he was, God's man, God called and says that he's special and indirect. He said, I don't care what time they, Israel was doing stuff. He said, I don't care if Samuel was here praying to me and he called on two other names. I still would change my mind. Lord Jesus. But Samuel shows up because God tells him anoint the next king. He says, surely this got to be him. Because he was tall and good looking, Lord said, No, nah, that ain't him. I don't want that fool. <laughs> he brings in another one. He said, No, nah, I sure don't want that one. He said, he say, You looking on the appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Yes, sir. That's how many mighty and not many noble are called because Lord, the Lord God is looking for the heart. And I don't want to say this one, Lord God said, Don't let the false prophets and these pulpit pimps. This morning dissuade you from who God called you to be. All right. You knew what God gave you to do. It don't matter about what people say about you and your call. You just do. Right. And God is gonna bless you, and He's gonna help Amen. you. He's gonna deal with all that later on. Amen. And that ain't got nothing to do with you, so don't even worry about it. Yours is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and declare that he is the savior of the world and get people saved, set free, healed, and delivered. That's your assignment. So go on and live your life. All right. And carry out your assignment. Hallelujah. So Emmanuel is with us. And we have divine help from our God. Thank you, Lord. Just as God was with Joseph and Mary. And he spoke to them to give them peace in the midst of that miracle. Because you don't have to think about needing peace in a miracle. My God. All right. Me today All right. I that, that. You, you don't think about that many times you need, <laughs> that you need peace in the midst of deliverance. Oh, you God. don't think of many times that you need peace in the midst of your body being healed. But God is faithful. Yes, he is. And he is not a man that he is lie. Neither should the son of man, neither the son of man that he should repent. Child of God, God is with you. Yes, sir. Say it again. He's with, with you. And when God is with you, things tilt to your favor. Yes, sir. <laughs> what that means, preacher, even when it's crazy, it's leaning for your good. I like that. Thank right, you, Lord. That, that, that even when it's ratchet. Yeah. You know about ratchet, don't you? That means it don't make it dirty, it's scandalous, it's it's, it's funky, it's mean, it's, it's unneeded, it's confusion, it's confusing. But even in the midst of that, it's still, God is still leaning. Yes, yes sir. Towards your faith. See, see, the Spirit of God been talking with pals. He said, you know, the Lord cares so much about our deliverance sometimes. He don't care about our feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I said, I want to play that for them hard amen that my yeah, cousin was talking yeah. about that time. That, 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 that the Lord care more about you. Yes, sir. Then he do with your fear while he'll snatch you out and you got to deal with the emotion. Yeah. Uh, he was like, now, nah, you know, now you want me to deliver you or you want us to just say you feel, feel good. Now, you can't have both sometimes. Uh, my Lord. Preach. I'm just, I'm just saying what Preach. I'm saying up here, but God will help you. He's with you and he's for you. Yes, sir. And child of God, don't you ever leave your seat with God. I hear him say this more. I'm gonna oh, say that again. Don't 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 leave your seat with God. Oh, I see that picture of Joseph with his brothers yeah. when they show up in Egypt. And, and and they don't recognize him, but he knows who they are. Yes, sir. And it's kinda like we walk with God sometimes we with him and don't recognize him, but he knows who we are. Yeah. And sometimes he shows up in another form that we ain't seen before. Yeah. Or he can speak a whole other language that we ain't heard before. And he has some power that we didn't expect him to have. Yeah. But Joseph is here and he, he, he seats his brothers according to birth order. 
And his brothers are amazed that he's able to do this because they don't really know who he is. Right. Not saying that they weren't all black people. They was all black people. It's just, you know, Joseph looks different now. They hadn't seen the boy in so long. They so much despise and hate him. It's kind of hard to recognize people that you hate because people that you hate, you tend to forget how they look sometimes to help yeah. your mind. Yeah. But he gets down to his baby brother, Benjamin. And the Bible says that he gives him a double portion. Yeah. And he gives him all these changes of clothes, and he gives him all this other stuff, much more than his brother, his other brother. And they didn't know that that was his brother directly. Yeah. In other words, they got the same dad and the same mom. Now, these other boys, you know, of course, you know, all that going on with their dad had going on right there, but this was his brother. Yeah. So this was the least of them. You would think the favor would be shown to the oldest, but the favor was shown to the baby child. Yeah. He, he extends himself and is a great blessing to his brothers in the time of a family. Yes, sir. He wouldn't let them pay for their food. Yeah, he was messing with them the whole time. Oh, yeah. But all in all, <laughs> he wouldn't let them pay for them. He'd say, now take their money and put it back in their sack. Yeah. Give them all the groceries they want, but their credit card ain't no good. Refund it back to them. And they get back to the house, they start counting money, and they get nervous. Yeah. Because everything that they left with is what they came back with. That's what we call a nervous blessing. Yeah, nervous. And God can bless you that same way, child of God. He, you can get what you lost back, or you can keep what you had when you left, when you come back. That's good. Right? Oh, my God. I can't even say it the same way I just said it right <laughs> But you be encouraged, child of God. Amen. Amen. Hold your head up. Hold, hold your head up. Hold your head up. My other one thing, mama was not for She was not for you feeling pitiful and sad and sorry <laughs> for yourself. She right. was never on that team. No. She'll let you cry one time. And after that, okay, what's your plan? Yeah. All right. What we doing next? Uh -huh. I mean, even when we used to get whippings, you know, mama have passed lenses. She went past the lenses there, have my sister come in there. Go check on your brother. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not trying to help you this morning. Yeah. Because a lot of times the Lord be working on us and, and giving us a heart for people and we don't know that that's what he's doing because yeah. he's using somebody else to do it through. Yeah. Yeah. Like Pastor said, God be doing all he can do. Yes, sir. And, and you know, it's funny, bro, Pastor, how God be doing all he can do and it seems like it ain't nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cold picture, but I guess God did that good, yeah. and he just that smooth. I don't even have a word for that, but we yeah, just thank God do. for what he does do. Yes, yeah. sir. Busted, that he don't just leave us just empty-handed. Yeah. He Lord. brought nation Israel out thank you, Lord. of bondage. Yes, he did. He said, y'all go and borrow from the Egyptians. The Bible said they, they borrowed so much from that gave so much fun like they, like they robbed them. <laughs> there wasn't no payday loan situation. I come against that this morning, too. Say that. Amen. Did he the, pay their loans? I know. But I'm trying to figure out how to get crib presents for my children. And I'll have an extra amount of life. Baby, go to the dollar store. Yeah. yeah. Work it out. And work it out. Work it out. I'm saying they got toy boys. They're going to tie them up anyway. Yeah, yeah. You're right. They're going to be in the regular toy box in just a few days after Christmas anyway. So it's none of you killing yourself. The children going to be glad because you got them what you got them. Yeah. But, but I wanted to get them such a way tell them, baby. Mama's working on getting that for you at a later time. It ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't that what your parents did with you? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I told y'all my testimony. This was a game I had asked for. I didn't get the group. I had already got some other gay stuff. I was already happy about it. I was good. You understand? You know, then we go down on Asian them house, and here it is. I got a whole nother one. Hello. That was a whole nother bonus. I, you know, it wasn't no big deal. Like, okay, I didn't get it. You know, I ain't thought no more about it. You know, could have bought it later on myself or something, but here it is. Well, they ain't had this in Dallas, but I wanted you to have it, so I had your auntie pick it up for you. The Lord worked the same way. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes what you Woo! want ain't where you live, but God still to give it to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, he will. 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 I start really getting off into this, but God will help you. Preach, yes, man. And, 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 and his help. <laughs> Woo, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost, while I talk. Hallelujah. Many times God's help, I hear him saying, see the picture is a wrecking ball. Uh -huh. <laughs> see, see, a lot of people ain't ready for that. Pretty good, man. Preach. That means he'll come in and just blow all of it 
knock all of it down the smithereens where you can't rebuild from it. Yeah. yeah. And all that is left is the broken pieces. Uh -huh. My God. So, <laughs> so what do you do in that instance, Pastor? You do the same thing that the world does in that instance. As it is above, so it is below. As it is within, so it is without. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what do you do in the natural? That which is natural first. They sweep up the pieces, clear the land, <laughs> and build something else there. Say it again. They sweep up the pieces, <laughs> put them off in the trash, Lord clear the land good, and build something else there. Yes, sir. See, Pastor Tyler, he's he been talking about this, I know, since since since, since I was a boy, I hear him say, he said, you got skeletons in your closet, put them in the closet, lock the door, break the knob off, <laughs> throw away the key, put a whole nother wall there so don't nobody even know it's there. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, Pastor, I just don't want to walk up. Oh, Lord, don't make me use them kind of words in church. <laughs> Please, I'm beseeching you because I feel y'all pulling on me out there. Uh-huh. When God gives you a way out, yeah, that's just what it is. A way out. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. See, you know, I talk about a lot of different things, you know, within my preaching, and I know I'm country and I recognize that. But it helps the mind to see different pictures. Grandpa said, he said, he said, they hunt, hunt rabbits sometimes, the rabbit get off in that rabbit hole. Yeah. And sometimes they get a rabbit out that hole. They do. They basically get a switch, put it in the hole, and start turning the switch oh, around the rabbit, and then you can pull them out. <laughs> wow! And sometimes the Lord has to get a switch, and it ain't you, you think the switch is to beat you with? Yeah. It ain't beating you. It's just to pull you out. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, I wish I could preach it like I hear it this morning, but but. You many times we think that God is punishing us, yeah, and giving us pain, yeah, when He's really pulling us out. Oh my God! Preach, man. Say, say that again. Say we, we think that God is punishing us, yeah, yeah, and God is pulling us out. Wow, man. See, the hell was got these special forces. I met this dude who was in the army. He said, "Look, man. He said, no, I was in the army. You know." This is what it was. I treated Dr. I treated Uncle Sam like he was my dad. Whatever the mission was he gave, whoever got in between me and their mission, they had to go. Yeah. Man, woman, child, boy, girl. This is what it is. Yeah, I, I gotta get you out of here and I gotta get you safe out of here. Now anything get in between that, they just catch it and it don't matter. Yeah. Why? Because I'm doing what I was told to do. I'm carrying out my orders. And, and, and God is the same way within himself. Yes, sir. <laughs> See. God is on this self. Can tell you to do something. It don't work. And he know it's not gonna work. Yeah. But he told you to do it. Uh -huh. So since he told you to do it, can't nobody else get you out but him. <laughs> that plane. So he gotta go through whatever he gotta go through to bring you out. Bring you out. And thank God that he brings us out. That's how we know God's Thank with God. us because he brings us out. He Thank sees God. see 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 a mother she loves her children and if she's with the daddy she sees the daddy in the children. That's what helps her with the children. Yeah. Because she loves the father. Oh my God. And God sees the Jesus in us. Thank you Lord. That's why he won't leave us destitute and homeless. He will send help. Thank you, Lord. Because he, he see Jesus in us. And thank God that he sees Jesus. He don't see our ragged, busted, trifling, dirty, ratchet ways. Oh, God. And that's all he sees. Because if that was all that God could see, child, we would all be miserable. Yeah. And we would never have any hope or chance of deliverance or grace or hope or help or salvation at all. Lord Jesus. But he sees his son in us and I can't leave my son in that hole. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I got some students. I know their parents. I taught their parents. I was their dad and sister. I got a whole other kind of affinity for them. Yeah. Because I look at them and I see who their daddy or their mama and them were. Right. 
So I'm going to look out for them a different kind of way. Same God ain't no different. It don't need to be yourself. All right. All right. He shows it to us through our scripture. Yes, sir. So you be encouraged on this one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Still a season of miracles. My Lord. Miracles ain't always pretty, they're not always convenient, they're not always well timed. <laughs> they don't always feel good. All right. Appreciate <laughs> and, 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 and God can scoop in yes. and scoop out. Yes, he will. <laughs> not but say it again, he can scoop in and scoop out. Yes, sir. And you got lifted up and you don't even know it. Oh my God. Because you feel bad, but you don't know why you feel bad because he came in so fast. Yeah. You, you know about somebody pulling you too fast? Make your head hurt? Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with God. So, child of God, Spirit of God says, see your way clear. What you mean, see your way clear? That's what I said. See your way clear. He's already cleared the way for you. Glory to God. He's already made a way for you. Thank you, Lord. And he's with you. But somebody wondered about that this morning. Like, now, I wondered, you know, where is God in this? Thing? You know, how does God feel about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what does God think about this? Oh, God. What, is, what are his feelings? What are his emotions? What is, what is, you know, what is his thought process? He's with you. <laughs> what you're and I tell you, see, talking about you've been talking about sometimes about a real friend, they know we with you whether you're right or you wrong. Yeah. Because you, you know, I mean, it's easy to be with somebody when they're right. Oh, yeah. And that's easy. I mean, you, 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 it's just a matter of fact. But when it's stinking, funky, and foul, oh, yeah. where you at? Who you rock with? Why? What? What's your thought process? But God said, I'm right there. With you. Yes, sir. So this morning, you need Jesus Christ to be with you. Yes, sir. And all the way He's going to be with you is if you accept Him as Lord and Savior. Well, how do I accept Him as Lord and Savior? You accept Him as Lord and Savior by believing with your heart, that's your spirit, and confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You need a savior. And you need to be saved from a burning hell. Hell is a real place. It's not a place that you want to spend eternity in. It's not a place that you want to go to to even visit. Oh my God. You want to go to heaven to be with God the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Where every day is hello and hi, how you doing? Yes, sir. Never goodbye. There's never nighttime out there. We don't even have to have the sun no more because God Lord, is going outside, outshining the sun. Thank you, Lord. I beseech you this morning by the mercy of God, be saved. Accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Thank you, Lord. Or maybe you are already saved, but you haven't been going to birth church, online church, you're going to the building if you can go. You can fix it this morning. Yes, Lord. You can get right with him right now. No better time in the present. The Bible says, Come, let us reason together, which means let's work it out. No matter what it is, whatever problem you may have or issue you may have with God, God is old enough and big enough to have it. Thank you. And things can be made brand new with you, yes, even you. Yep. You haven't gone too far, you haven't done too much, you haven't experienced too much, you're not hurt too much. You're not addicted too much. You're not afflicted too much. You're not hurting too much. But God can't clean you up and fix you. Glory to God. Because our God is a Savior. He is a healer. That's who he is. And that's what he does. Yes, he is. So if you say, yes, that's me. I desire to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to get back in a good place with God. I don't want to be in this weird place with him anymore. I want to come back to him. You're going to pray a prayer. It's the same prayer to be saved or to get back with God, get back in relationship with God, or get back where you were with God. Just simply ask that you would just bow your head right there where you are. Nothing magical about it. Just a sign of respect and humbling yourself to God. And just repeat this prayer after me, if you will, please. This morning, the prayer says, Dear God, Dear God I know without Jesus that I am lost. I thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus to Christ. To die on the cross. In my place. 
for my sins and my iniquities. Thank you for getting him up on the third day. Jesus Christ, thank you for dying for my sins and getting up the third day that I might have the right to the tree of life. Jesus Christ, thank you for saving me. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my King. And I want you to sit on the throne of my heart. And I want to serve you the rest of my days. Jesus Christ, you are my Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. And just like that, you're saved. If you're with somebody there, just tell them, I just got saved. Amen. If you got saved, you can also, if you would, please just type there in the comments. Amen. To receive salvation. Amen. On this morning. We thank you, amen, for joining us via social media, Facebook, YouTube this morning. We're greatly encouraged by your presence. We're praying for you and in agreement with you to experience God's best in your life. So as you go, tell the word about Jesus and tell them about his love. As the name Jesus saves and Jesus heals and Jesus prospers. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday. We won't be here Wednesday. Amen. Have a Merry Christmas.